Okay, so if you're watching this video, I'm going to guess you watched last night's debate with Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, and you've probably walked away the same way that I walked away from it, which is, I can't believe this is our political system. Whatever we have going on right now from a politics standpoint is dumb. It's it's It sucks. It sucks really bad. Trump, Kamala, ABC, all of those three things to me, I'm watching it and I'm like, all three are just so flawed. <laughs> I'll start with ABC. The debate formats that we have for president are the dumbest things of all time. It makes no sense. Two minutes to answer a question rapid fire on issues that require 30, 45, 60 minutes to talk about. Okay. How are you ever going to get a answer that actually allows a voter to know what this person truly believes, truly stands for, especially in contrast with their opponent, right? So that's number one. Number two, you can't fact check one person, in this case, Trump, who lies a lot, okay? And not fact check the other person who also lies a lot. And so what that does is that it creates additional fuel for this uh, concept, this notion that mainstream media are puppets of the Democratic Party. I felt like that was quite obvious last night. Trump spoke longer, sure, but you can't fact check one person and not fact check the other one when the other one's clearly just blatantly misquoting the other person, right? Or presenting data set or or facts that are heavily biased or don't tell the full picture, right? As a, as a data person on both sides, right? As a data person, you should be calling that out, but they don't for one individual candidate. That makes no sense to me. Then we get to Trump. I think Trump had a gigantic opportunity with this debate to really show himself as a candidate that truly is trying to unify the country. Put all the other garbage aside that people think of the guy or, you know, convicted felon and all this other stuff with the lawsuits and blah, 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 blah which I really do think a lot of it is lawfare, to be completely honest. But let's set that aside. This person had a very heroic moment a few weeks, months ago with the shooting that happened, right? Super badass, fight, fight, fight. Uh, the most American thing I've seen <laughs> since I've been alive, just that like, happened live in front of me. It, it filled me with pride. It's like, hey, look, that's a, that's a guy that's not afraid of being shot at. There's a lot of strength in that. Okay, great. But then in this debate, he comes out and has the same tired shtick. And you know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the shtick. Just just, just saying whatever. Just talking shit. <laughs> Not really focusing much on, on details. Just being an entertainer, really. And honestly, a borderline clown in a way. Because it's just like, like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you trying to do, right? You have the opportunity to really show yourself for, for who you actually are. Especially when the guy has been on podcasts on All In. He was on a podcast with Lex Friedman, with Theo Vaughn. He had that conversation with Elon Musk on Spaces. In all those forums, he came across so much better. Like, he actually came across as somebody who cared about the country and had the policy to back it up. And then he gets in front of the camera and he literally can't help himself. He can't help himself to be an entertainer, to try and, like, show himself a certain way. So I'm like, okay, so if you're making the decision to do that, to be someone that you're really not, just to cater to a part of your base that's going to vote for you anyway. That tells me that Trump is not trying to be honest. I have a hard time trusting the guy. New York real estate guy, right? I mean, <laughs> stereotypes and all, okay? I just have a very hard time trusting him because he's making a premeditated decision to basically insult the people that are that are that are watching him like it's just it's so divisive the way he talks it's terrible and then when we had the opportunity as a country to come together around that thing happening which we I think we all agree should never happen which is trying to assassinate a freaking president right he continues on with this stupid freaking shtick continues lying and saying all this garbage on camera okay great so nothing's changed there and then we get to Kamala. <laughs> so with Kamala, I was a, by the way, I'm not crying. These, these are allergies. We're in uh, Colorado and uh, beautiful, beautiful weather and scenery. But yeah, it's, uh, 
I don't know, soaping in the air. <laughs> My biggest issue with Kamala, it's, it's really the Democratic Party, the Democrat Party. I voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. I became a citizen in 2014. And I was a huge Obama fan at the time. A lot of my politics at that time were very much, you know, Democrat Party, very aligned. I viewed the Republican Party as a bunch of racists, as a bunch of bigots, right? The the thing that the Democrat Party likes to brainwash, <laughs> you know, their, their uh, core voting base with, in my opinion. And then 2020, I became an independent. I went through this whole process of, you know, realizing that a lot of things that the Democrat Party stand for, they don't really stand for it. They just kind of posture as if they do. And they've weaponized empathy and kindness to gain power, you know? And I think Kamala Harris is a personification of that. Like she is literally that right now. But this is a candidate that the entire country thought was one of the worst politicians we've had in a really long time. Then in the span of a few weeks, mainstream media has made her seem like the second coming of Christ. Every single bit of major policy that she's had as part of her platform as a politician, the second she becomes the president uh, or, or the, the second she becomes the candidate for president for the Democrat Party, almost all of them switch. Fracking immigration, a bunch of stuff with the economy, the disaster with the unrealized gains tax, which initially people thought wasn't real because of how ridiculous it was. Turns out it was real. And then she, of course, had to back out of it because it was such an insanely ridiculous, dumb policy. But what's worse is you have a bunch of politicians from, let's say, the, the early 2000s. And I'm going to talk specifically about Dick Cheney, right? That ends up endorsing Kamala Harris as president because they're saying, you know, Donald Trump is the worst person ever, so I have to endorse Kamala Harris. Okay, cool. It's it's funny how quickly people forget that Dick Cheney and sort of that whole call the neocon, these people that constantly are trying to go to war, right, which I'm very much against because people dying doesn't make any sense to me. They end up endorsing this candidate. So what that tells me is that the vessel for which the military industrial complex tries to gain power and money, they now view the Democrat Party as that party to be able to gain favor. And we've seen Kamala and the Democrat Party shift policy basically overnight to try and appease the highest bidders. So then when I watch her on stage, and don't get me wrong, I thought the debate itself, like if you're just talking about optics, she performed a lot better than Trump because, again, Trump literally can't help himself but say the dumbest stuff on earth. <laughs> he literally can't. You watch Kamala, in my opinion, put on put on an act, right? A very good one. But it sort of encapsulates, she's like the vessel of all the things that are wrong about politics today, which is trying to appease your donors and trying to appease the system. The Democrat Party for sure is the system party and Trump is the hammer party, right? Break the system. The problem is Trump was in office from 2016 to 2020 and the system is worse, I would argue, now than it was before he was president. So if you were really trying to fix the system, how come it's worse now than it was before, right? Some people would make the argument, well, it should have taken, you know, it takes longer than four years. Does it? Should it? I don't know. I'm a, four years is a lot of time. And, and this is like, honestly, the, the worst part of it all, this, this, this right here, is if you really think about the topics that were discussed in the debate, and this, is, this goes back to ABC and, and the debate format, the most important things that we should be talking about as a country were not even brought up. The debt, as an example. Every single person that lives in the United States, child, elderly, whoever, uh, individual that lives in the United States, they carry $100,000 worth of national debt right now. And that debt is gro going up every single year. And so what that means is that if, you have, if you're a family of four, husband, wife, two kids, or whatever, that family, without them even knowing, they have $400,000 of national debt that politicians have burdened them with from the last 20, 30, 40 years, right? And that debt that we've taken out to fund government spending, essentially. A lot of it is paid by taking out debt and selling the bonds or inflation by printing money, 
You know, the government prints money and they pay for that. The interest we're paying on that debt is more every year now than the amount we're paying on defense, okay? So we're paying about $900 billion a year with a B, so almost a trillion dollars a year, every single year, to fund our military operations overseas, domestically, et cetera, et cetera. The interest that we're paying now on that debt that I just discussed is more, the interest, the interest is more than we're paying for defense. Does that make sense to you? That wasn't discussed. The health epidemic, 40% plus of the country is obese. Anxiety is going through the roof. Depression is going through the roof. Kids have never been more anxious. Kids have never been more concerned about the future. You have a drug crisis in a lot of the country. Appalachia, Midwest, really the entire freaking country is like just, <laughs> there's a huge problem, right? With fentanyl coming across the board. Going to talk about that. Birth rate collapse. People are not having kids anymore, really. You know, we, we just had our first one <laughs> and I'm 37, right? Why are people not having kids? Probably because they don't feel very good about the future, maybe, as somebody who didn't want kids for a while, right? Put myself in, in those people's shoes. The world's kind of messed up, okay? The, the, like everything kind of feels broken. I didn't have the financial security where I felt like I could take this on, right? Once I achieved those things, I'm one of the fortunate few that's able to do that. How come we didn't talk about that in the debate? It's so wild to me, man. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And the fact that, you know, I used to be, a, again, a Democrat, and now the Democrat Party is obviously for war. <laughs> obviously for war, you know? And then on the other side, you have a freaking a clown figure that can't help himself. Regardless of how good his his policy might be, it's so hard to vote for him. It's so hard to vote for him. And I know, I just, you know, I talk to people, like I know I can't be the only person. I, can't, I know I can't be the only person. I know. And I feel like this is the giant majority of this country. It's like we're, we're looking and we just can't believe it. Like, we can't believe that what we saw last night is literally the two people that are running for president of the United States. An empty vessel that will do whatever the bidders want her to do. And then a person on the other side that does nothing but talk shit. <laughs> that does nothing but talk shit and divide the country and, and literally drive a significant percentage of the population crazy because of how divisive the guy is. And he had the chance to that to fix that very obvious flaw and he didn't take it. And so the argument I hear is, well, he is the encapsulation of the anger in the United States, right? There's a lot of angry people that got screwed over with all the policies from the past in the United States. A bunch of manufacturing left, a bunch of towns were decimated. They're overrun with you know a, a drug problem, uh, families are being torn apart because of it. I completely understand that. Yes, I totally get it. But really, that's the best way that you can encapsulate that anger. Those people are going to vote for you anyway because they saw your presidency in 2016 to 2020 and they were happy with, with what Trump did. Why continue this very obvious shtick where you're just pissing off people that don't have the time to sit down because of how busy they are to understand what the fuck's happening in the world? So weird. It, it makes no sense to me. Anyway, that's my rant. I hope some people hear this and they feel like this connects with them in some way. This is my small way to try and leverage my platform to, I don't know, change the world a little to a little bit better place by voicing an opinion that maybe is not popular or maybe is not um, spoken about enough. Because I do feel like my the way I feel about this is the majority. I could be wrong. But, you know, the extremes tend to be the the smallest percentage. You know, if I think about anything in life, you know, 80-20 rule applies. 20% of the population is going to be extreme. Not, I'm not calling them bad people. They're just going to be very super hardcore about their beliefs, both on the left and right side of the political spectrum. And in the middle is just looking and being like, what is, what is this? What is this? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm going to go enjoy this uh, beautiful scenery and weather. Hopefully try to feel a little bit more positive about the future. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody.